I'm Kamey Jason. This is the way I see it. Welcome to the west side of Grand Cayman, guys. We're out here on a dive boat called Juggernaut with my favorite dive crew from Ambassador Divers. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about lens selection. The first lens I wanna to talk to you guys about today is my wide lens. Now, depending on what type of camera you're shooting, whether it's a full frame camera or a mirrorless or micro, micro four thirds camera, it's gonna sort of dictate what lens you choose. Now for me, in my uh, full frame camera, my Canon 5D Mark IV, I like to go super wide. And now we're talking about, when I say wide, we're talking about 15 millimeters or more. So the lens that I use, and you've probably seen in some of the other videos, is my L series 815 zoom from Canon. Now this is a super wide lens, and this lens plays double duty for me. Let me explain. When I'm shooting wide, wide angle stills, I'm in 15 millimeters. So that's gonna give me the big massive reef scene with the cobalt blue water in the background, the sun at the top of the image, and my subject su swimming somewhere through the center of the image. Now, when I go into video mode, my Canon 5D Mark IV actually shoots a crop sensor video, a 4K video. If I'm at 19, 20, 10, 80, it's okay, it's cool, it's all good to go. But when I go into 4K, the camera goes into a crop sensor mode. So then what I can do, because I'm shooting the 8, 15 zoom, is I back the lens out to eight, nine millimeters, and that puts my video back at that 15 millimeter aspect. So it makes it as if I'm, I'm double dutied up on my lens. I've got a wide lens for my 4K video. I've got a 15 millimeter for my stills and it's the perfect lens for this format for me. Now if you're shooting a micro four thirds or, or a, uh, a mirrorless camera you're going to shoot a different lens and the reason for that is your sensor has always got that crop so if you if you want to get a 15 millimeter like what I shoot you're going to have to shoot a 10 millimeter lens to get that and then there's a multiplication factor and that's going to end you that's going to land you somewhere around 15 millimeters. For those of you who aren't into wide angle and macro is your thing, looking for those little tiny blennies and those little Pedersen cleaning shrimps and all the little tiny stuff that you find hiding in the dark recesses of the reef, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna look for a macro lens. Now for me, because I, again, I shoot a full frame camera, um, I shoot a Canon 100 millimeter macro lens. Now, again, this is a setup for a full frame camera, but this can also be used on a crop sensor or a mirrorless camera. Uh, Canon camera. And what happens if you put this 100 millimeter on a crop sensor camera, you're going to come out with something like 160 millimeters. Uh, so for those of you shooting that micro four thirds or mirrorless rig, you're going to want to go with about a 60 millimeter lens to achieve this sort of 100 millimeter effect. Now again, this is good for little critters about yay big, maybe the size of your finger. Now if you want to go into that super macro range, you're going to want to use a diopter. And they make a few of those. Some of them, depending on what type of camera you have, some can go on your lens internally inside the housing. Others are wet diopters that go on the outside of your rig that you can put on underwater. I prefer the wet diopter. It gives you the ability to shoot your 100 millimeter. And then if you choose to do so, go ahead and put that diopter on the outside of your housing and go for that super macro shot. Now, as you can see here, when you change from wide to macro, you can't simply just change the camera inside the housing. You also have to change your port. So when you're purchasing an underwater rig, it's important to understand what your objectives are. If you're mainly gonna shoot wide angle, you're gonna to wanna to go with a wide port. Now these are very expensive, so you wanna make sure you get it right. And your, each housing manufacturer has a port specific to your camera and its lens. So you wanna check that out before making any decisions on what lens port combination you're gonna buy. Now, as you can see here, I've got an eight inch dome port on my CNC for my eight millimeter lens, my 815 L series Canon zoom. And then on my Icolite housing, which is my macro rig, I have a macro port which houses my 100 millimeter Canon macro lens. Now, as you can see on the outside of the macro port, I actually have a zoom gear. Now, that is very handy. When you shoot macro photography, whether you're shooting video or stills, it's very difficult for your camera to pull focus on those tiny little creatures. So basically, when you're shooting macro, the key is to get the critter's eyes in focus. And it's very difficult to do that without the ability to manually zoom your lens. Some of the new mirrorless cameras are better at autofocus than some of the older models. So you may be able to pull it off with um, autofocus uh, function on your camera. But for the most part, you're going to want to use a uh, manual zoom ring. And as you can see on the outside of my Icolite rig, that comes built into the port. So whether you guys choose to shoot wide angle or macro, do your homework, make sure you get the right port for your lens. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Guys, please be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I'm Cayman Jason. This is the way I see it.